oh man, expectations and feelings and all that good stuff is, is, is real, but uh, this is telling me that we serve a mighty, mighty Savior that 2,000 years ago knew that what was going to come out of His Word into minister from my mouth to you guys, uh, it would feed us well. So I'm, I'm praying that will happen today. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you. Thank you for who you have sent. Lord, I, I totally understand the uh, scripture now that says, all are called, but few are chosen. Lord, what will that look like? Uh, Lord, I do not think it will be millions. I could be wrong, Lord, but I do not feel like it will be millions. Uh, obedience and commitment and not making and leaning on the worldly excuses of why we can't worship you, Lord. Oh, Lord, just uh, I'm just asking right now that you just, uh, just huh, minister to hearts. Prick hearts and transform them. In your beautiful name, amen. amen. All right, if you're able, please stand. Turn to number 446. <laughs> We're going to sing all three verses this morning. <laughs> Two on there now. There was one name on it 
October 5th is Glen Allen Day. It's an opportunity for this church to go out in the community. They'll have food trucks and all kinds of things. Now, I did find out quite a bit of rules. I'm not going to go over all of them, but uh, I was thinking we could do like the two-by-two two mission there. That is kind of forbidden. Uh, they're real strict about it, and they do have people that actually feelers that don't allow you to do that. However, we can stay inside of our tent area that we have paid for uh, to hand out some New Testament Bibles, and I've asked Brother George to get with the Gideons and see if they could uh, do like the, the little min miniature pocket Bibles of uh, Psalms and Proverbs, and I got some bracelets. And but it's a good opportunity for then when they come, we can hand them the card and just continue to uh, fulfill the Great Commission to get people to continue to come uh, because I, I love this church and I don't want to see it go away. Uh, I really don't. Not mean that. So that being said, I will need help early in the morning, I'm talking like 7.30 a.m., to be there, to be at the facility, to help me get the tent straight, to do some things like that, and then you can start helping in 30-minute increments, or if you want to stay an hour, that's cool, but and we also have breakdown. You know, I, 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 know, I, I feel like I can do it all, uh, but sometimes I can't, so if I, you know, uh, 10 hours of that might exhaust me a little bit for the kingdom, that's cool, but I am human. So I will need help. I do want you guys, I do not mean that out of sarcasm. I'm being serious. Come out and let's do this thing. They have food. They're going to have some music. And it's just an opportunity. If, if two or three people come, uh, then, it's, then it's, a, it's a win for us. It's October 5th. Uh, I'll need, like I said, I'll only need about two people at 730. And then you can meet us up there when it starts at 930. Uh, they have some pretty good parking. I've been in the past. Um, and I understand. Look, hey, we all got stuff going on. Every day of the week, I got something going on. But just, I mean, it's just like today. It's 60, I mean, come for 60 minutes. 60 minutes, you know. That's, that's, that's kind of all we're asking. So come and support us. Come and be part of this church. I, I just, I, I believe in the people I'm looking at right now. I believe in this church. I believe that the Lord is going to do something through our obedience. Uh, I do want to thank Bert. He will not appreciate this, but that's my, in that case, that's probably why I'm doing it. Uh, just because I, I love him so much that I can, uh, but he did make the signs that we're going to uh, uh, put up, um, and Gene has a banner, uh, but that's something else we have to be very careful of, get into that another time, uh, because we can't go out, the sign-up sheet's in the back for you, uh, to the right here, and, and there's some handout cards there, uh, and I'll have plenty of those uh, at, the, at the site, and we just got to remember, uh, if you want to add to something, come and see me. That is not a control thing of, hey, you must see that. But there is an order to the church. And the reason I say that is uh, outside of the tent, we, we're not allowed to put things like signs or anything. So we just got to be, they're real strict about inside there because there's so many people. Anyway, I um, want to pray for um, Jessica. Thursday, she is having, uh, that is um, uh, John and Jennifer's uh, daughter, and she is having a uh, back surgery. And it's at Duke University. Yeah, so that, that is an urgent prayer, and uh, I'll make sure I get her on the call them all. And um, there's also a sign up sheet for homecoming October 13th. Please, as you're doing the two by two mission, uh, hand out some cards and just tell them. And I'm going to try to do that um, this coming up. A week, I'm going to get someone, if you want to volunteer, let me know, uh, to just print out something small so when we're at Glen Allen Day, we can say, hey, come come see us. We're doing a homecoming. We're rebuilding, because essentially, let's face it, we're rebuilding. We're rebuilding. And that's, we, I just want to show people that, uh, that kind of love. Um, and that's it for me. At this time, we're going to take up the offering. Also, the sign-up sheet is out there. Yes, also, yeah, for the food and things like that. And once again, I'll get into that, uh, well, I'll get into that uh, soon. I don't want to continue to say this, but that just doesn't mean just bring food. Please get with us. That means we need someone after we go to Sam's Club to help us, at, where it's not just Diane and I, to help us get the stuff out of the truck. And I know that doesn't sound like a lot, but three or four cases of water and some other things. We just, so we, we just, we need help all the way around. If you happen to be here uh, on a Friday or a Saturday or just call me and we can, there's much more than just bringing a dish. 
uh, especially uh, with the numbers we're currently at. Uh, but I believe the God, that the Lord is going to continue to honor our obedience and commitment. All right. Brother uh, Doug, we pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we do thank you for this day. You have been blessed to you and brought to us all through this past week. Lord, we thank you for the way you brought to us last night. Lord, this you do not want to be a us as we go through the rest of this service, be a our pastor as he brings a message to us. Lord, just bless this offering in Christ's name we do pray. Amen. Amen.
this prayer that I pray. The world can give it to me all right now. This prayer that I pray. The world can give it to me. The hallelujah. This prayer. Before I turn your microphone on, there's one more announcement. Do not forget, if you're going to give some money to Pastor Appreciation Sunday, please uh, earmark it or give it to me and let me know. Um, I, I would like to have all the money by October the 10th, if we can. And I knew Scott wouldn't make that announcement, but he didn't ask. So if you're going to... We appreciate our pastor, and we want to give him a great gift. So, anyway, there you go. Amen. Open your Bibles to uh, James 4. This will be the last of it. Uh, I'm excited. I almost don't want to get out of it, so uh, who knows? Maybe there might be another uh, continuation. What a, what a beautiful book. What uh, great promises. And I love how the book of James, uh, he is, it's almost like he just doesn't have time to mix words. And I'm going to read uh, 1 through, um, where I'm going to be today will be 6 through 10, but I want to read up until that point. I'll do a, a small, small recap, and I do mean small, um, uh, but check this out what he says, and it's a beautiful thing. Uh, let us pray before we read uh, God's Word. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you. Thank you for your Word. Thank you for your people, Lord. I, uh, Lord, I know there are... Um, <laughs> I can, I can look around, Lord, and see uh, many church parking lots uh, full to the max, Lord. But, uh, Lord, in this moment, may I not focus on that, but focus on who you have brought here today. And can you just bestow blessings upon them. And, Lord, just uh, honor the commitment because they showed up today, Lord. They're coming to worship you. They're coming to hear your word. Lord, thank you for this. And, Lord, just uh, I will minister to you as you do what you always do and just put your words and their heart to do some transforming. Uh, Lord, thank you for this time. In your name, amen. amen. So, like I said, 1 through 6, and then I'll read 6 through 10 after I do a recap. But it says, uh, and again, James 4, it says, What causes quarrels and what causes fights among you? Is it not this, that your passions are within war within you? You desire and do not have, so you murder. You covet and cannot contain, so you fight and quarrel. You do not ha have because you do not ask. You ask and you do not receive because you ask wrongly to spend it on your passions. You adulterous people, do you not know the friendship with the word is enemy, which is like an enemy of God, with God. Therefore, oh, I love this, therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world, makes himself an enemy of God? Or do you suppose it is to no purpose that the Scripture says he yearns jealousy over the Spirit that he has made to dwell in us? And, whew, man, I love that. I love that we have, uh, I love that I can faithfully in a, in a healthy way, fear the Lord Jesus Christ. I love that the ways of the world, that I can quarrel, that I can get down. Yesterday I, um, I, I sent uh, some messages out. Uh, yes, I am human. Uh, in, case, uh, in case I forget that I am human and, and I got discouraged. I had a bout of discouragement. And, and I believe Satan can, uh, that's why the Bible says, uh, take every thought captive. But I believe if I'm not careful, uh, Satan will start shifting that way of thinking, and then before you know it, I'm, uh, I'm hiding in a cave like David. Uh, but instead, I started quietly asking some prayer warriors to, hey, pray for me. Hey, do this. Or if you, if you get random texts from me at random times, uh, whether it be encouragement or whatever, don't always assume that 
that's just a one-way thing because that's why it's, the scriptures say iron sharpens iron. Maybe I'm not telling you, hey, I'm super discouraged right now, but maybe I'm just sending you something to say, hey, we love you. We love you. We care about you. Thank you, uh, Angie, for, for decorating the church. Thank you, my wife, for, for, for jumping in this ministry with me. And, 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 and the times are hard and the bills are coming in and things and real life is happening. But what James is saying is I have a choice today. What am I praying on? And are the worldly things or what, what something should look like in my eyes? Uh, uh, 500 people at a church and, and maybe that's going to build my pride up and some other things. And, 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 but I just got to trust that you're, and I want you to trust, and I think that's what James is saying here, that you are a puzzle piece if you are a born-again believer. And hey, look, <laughs> glory, Beulah land. Man, Diane, I love that song, Beulah land. I wish I could sing, I'd sing it, but I'm not going to. So, kingdom spirit over worldly actions. And uh, this was three points. Uh, abstain from something, the worldly ways, the getting people in your ear. Hey, look, we, I can talk about some secular things, and I'm not against that. But I also, if you're going to call me and blow me up about politics or whatever it might be, I also want to tell you, well, hey, let's bring it to the Word. Let's see, speaking of politics, let's bring it to the Word. Let's see what the Lord says. Let's see how He cherishes uh, Israel. Uh, because for some reason, everybody's all hush-hush about Israel. No, 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 let's see what the Bible says. Let's bring it to the Word. Let's see what the Bible says. And that's a beautiful thing. And I love, I love doing that to people, not for a setup, but just to let them know, hey, don't, don't take the bait. Don't take the bait, because it's easy to do. It's easy to feel a certain way and not get into God's Word. It's easy to feel a certain way, and that might seem like a fact because you're feeling it, but no, feelings are not facts. Yes, I get tired. Yes, things happen. Yes, my wife gets tired. I'm sure Wes does, Bert does. We all do. We all get tired. But it's no reason to stick. We've got to keep... Hey, look, sometimes this gospel walk, you've got to trudge. You've got to trudge to happy destiny. You've got to trudge. But you've got to know the whole time you're trudging, you're doing it, that the world, as Paul says, all the world stuff is rubbish. I love that he uses that word. It's rubbish. This is, we got to stay focused. So abstain from that and, and uh, uh, retain some things. And then today is going to be attain. Uh, but it's, uh, so very quickly, the first two points, abstain, uh, were from the first three verses. To understand the humility of your character, you must abstain to choose not to do something. Or, in this case, uh, refrain from acting a certain way uh, that's not pleasing to the Lord. Because uh, that's what this is all about. Hey, look, I can look good in front of you. Uh, I, I can do a lot of things. And, and don't think because men of God are up here preaching or, or anything else that they're not untouchable. I was not going to bring this up, but it hit me so hard this week. And, and I say, let's pray for him, not judge him and gossip behind his back. And he doesn't even know us. Uh, but Brother Stephen Lawson is a well, well-known preacher. And I don't know if you guys have heard, but uh, uh, he stepped out on his marriage. And, and he's, uh, he is, uh, from what I understand, he's been asked to leave the church and some things like that. But, but, but Romans 8 says, I can't condemn that man. And be careful, my friends. I'm here to tell you, be careful. Be careful saying that because your I would never do that is just waiting around the corner with Satan. That's why it says we don't fight with flesh and blood, but the principalities. He wants to take you to a certain mindset that maybe you had when someone was speaking life into you that shouldn't have been speaking life. I have seen it happen. Be careful. Be aware. I am warning this church. Be aware. But we do not have to be scared because we can help in a healthy way fear the Lord. Therefore, he is our armor of God. Therefore, he is our strength. And remember in the armor of God how many times it says stand. Therefore, stand withstand the devil. Therefore, and just so many stands in there. And just remember that. So refrain from being friends with the world. Uh, in return, puffs up our ego and pride. Therefore, we're enemies of God. That's why it says he yearns jealousy over the spirit that he may dwell in us. So this leads us to uh, uh, attain, uh, to succeed in and, and once again, the, uh, uh, the restraint end of it is, is, is to not get into those worldly ways. And, and to achieve this, we have to attain some things. And, and uh, I just love it to clarify your objections, uh, objectives, sorry, and a way of attaining them. How do I attain what James is saying? And I just love this. Uh, it's so funny because sometimes in my notes, 
Uh, my wife will say, man, you, you love a lot. You love a lot. But it's hard when you read this scripture uh, just to, uh, and that's why the recap sometimes takes so long because I want scripture to excite you. But just listen to what James says in 6 through 10. It says, but he gives, now, now remember on um, verse 5, he's saying, or do you suppose it is no purpose that the scripture says he yearns jealousy over the spirit that he has made to dwell in us. Remember, that's, that was the last verse. So feeding off that, then he, he's jealous for us, he yearns for us. Last week we talked about uh, Romans 8, interceding this Holy Spirit. I'm not alone. I mean, think about that for a second. Even in my darkest depression or discouragement, yes, I have Christ, a, a Christian hood. I have brothers and, 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 and uh, Brother George and Ron and people and Mark and everybody of Gene, Brother Gene, all of us. I can call and get them to strengthen me, but I am not alone. Remember what it says in John 14, and I said it last week, he'll send another helper. The Holy Trinity is amazing. And he's interceding for the believers, for the chosen one. That's us. That's what just, it baffles me sometimes. We, I can't give you 60 minutes? I, I said 60 minutes. Man, I can do any. I feel like I could get through anything in 60 minutes. Uh, and, unless it's just bad preaching, and I hope that's not the case. So, let's read uh, verses 6 through 10. I love where he takes off. It says, but he gives, but he gives. This is after the, uh, that he yearns for jealousy over the Spirit, made us to dwell in it. But check this out. But he gives more grace. Therefore, it says, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Submit, man. If you mark your Bibles, please just highlight that thing until it highlights through to the next page. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Can you imagine listening to this? Like, I, I, I love James, but I'm like, hey, ease up, bro. Man, don't call me double-minded. Who are you talking to? You know, that's my mind. That's how my mind goes. But think about this. It can so easily happen to me that I've got to be careful. One little thing of someone saying something that hurt my feelings. We talked about this last week, where I'm just so sensitive. Think about how many times they told Christ, hey, remember, I, I, I preached on it uh, four weeks ago. And they heard this, and they walked away. And I keep mentioning that because I don't want you to just hear this and walk away. Let's dissect it together. So that's why he's saying, cleanse your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be wretched. And mourn and weep. Let your laughter, and I can't wait to get into this, be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourself before the Lord and He will forsake you. No, not impossible. He'll, uh, he'll let you on your own for a little while. Like Jesus had to take do what He had to do on the cross for us. No, no, no. He will exalt you. He will exalt you. And these are promises I need today. I need these. Uh, whether it's a, a Jessica going into surgery, whether it's uh, uh, Diane's, uh, I don't know, feet hurting or, or, or whatever, or it's a heart surgery, I don't care what it is. I need to know these promises and I need them to be instilled in my heart so I can speak them out loud. When the times of discouragement come, I can say, hold on, he already said, remember, hey honey, before you get discouraged, remember, oh man, before the Lord and He will humble yourself. In other words, you don't know it all, you don't have all the answers, but God's, just like I read earlier, out of Isaiah 40, His Word is going to blossom. It's going to continue to bear fruit. His Word doesn't go void. Isaiah also 55. As you can tell, I've been in Isaiah a lot this week. It's just so fun. And, and, and to piggyback off that for a second, I told Brother Mark, and, and he's, he's really getting a front row seat to my sarcasm. But I was like, he came in today, and I was like, uh, well, first of all, let me get serious. I want to get serious for a second. He came in today and he couldn't find me. I was at the altar weeping. I don't want you, that's not for people to feel sorry for me. I was weeping. I was like, come on, Lord. Will your people hear you? Lord, if it's only 30 or 40 or 50 of us, will we be so committed that no matter what they're going through, maybe a stronghold came back in their life, or can we call each other and just say, hey, and, and not have to be embarrassed? Can we humble ourselves enough to say, hey, man, look, I slipped on some things last week. Uh, I cursed at someone. I shouldn't have done that. Really made me, f yes, I know feelings aren't facts, but in this time, uh, can, can you just, can we help one another? Can we just do that? I think of Brother Harry and, and, 
and I said this last week, like he, he, he talk about yearns jealousy. He yearns to be here. He craves to be here. He does not like it. Something is missing in his life from not being here. That's what I love. I love that. Lois, I believe, was the same way when she was when in the hospital and things like that. And, and, and man, I just, I love this. But, but just check out what it says. Understand this kind of grace that is on no merit of my own. I do not deserve this kind of grace. I yelled at my wife. I was an alcoholic. I was a drug user. I was a smoker. All this kind of stuff. I didn't deserve it. But when I humbled myself and I was able to say, hold on, let me figure out what James is saying. Look at verse 6. It says, but he gives more grace. Wow. You can, I, I can almost just shut the sermon down now. But he gives more grace. He gives it to us. I'm not deserving of that. And that's not, you know, I used to listen to preachers and it just, by the time you left, you just felt like, man, I, I'm, Isaiah, once again, Isaiah, Isaiah was really right. I am filthy rags in the eyes of a righteous Lord. But please understand that. He's not saying that to down you. He's saying that because he wants you to draw near to him, to come in to his presence, to come into that secret place and dwell with him. Hey, maybe I'm getting, uh, if it's a younger uh, kid, maybe they're getting bullied. Maybe something's going on. Maybe they're scared. Maybe they don't want to say anything. For years, I held in tons of pain until Pastor Bullock came to my house or until uh, a Brother George shook my hand or, or oh man, he knows I'm going to say it because I, I can't not. Brother Ron used to sit up here every week and, and say, hey, if you showed up today, it wasn't by mistake. I, I just, tears would roll down my eyes and I was like, man, stop saying that. How does he know? He knows because he's met the Lord Jesus Christ. So it says he understands that bit of grace. He's been through some of the pain and the trials and the tribulations. And he, all he wants to do is take you to it in a loving way. So before we get all sensitive and things like this, that's why he's saying, hey, it's more grace. The same Holy Spirit convicting us of our compromise will also grant us the grace to serve God as we should. No surprise, but I just I love him. Man, if you, if you don't have a book on Spurgeon, please get one. It's just, it's, it's beautiful stuff. Just, and he, he's the same, I, I, I think, man, him and James would have done well together. So Spurgeon said, uh, sin seeks to enter grace. Or no, hold on. Sin seeks to enter. Grace shuts the door. Sin tries to get the mastery. But grace, which is stronger than sin, resists and it will not permit it. Sin gets us down at times and puts its foot on our neck. Grace comes to the rescue. Sin comes up like Noah's flood, but grace rides over the top of the mountains like an ark. Then says he opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. I love how he just flows in with that, and that's the reason I had to put the Spurgeon quote in there. It's just, it's great. So stop talking. Brother Burke and I talk about this all the time. Well, you know, the devil, the devil, the devil, the devil. No, what about Jesus? What about Jesus? Let me tell you what Jesus could do. Let me tell you who he is. I want to have a ready-made answer. I don't want you to have to be sitting around saying, hey, what do you mean opposes the proud and gives grace to the humble? Let's look. James reminds us that the grace only comes to the humble. I love when Paul says, humble thyself. I say again, humble thyself. You know why I believe in my world he says I say again? Because I can doze off. I can look at my phone. I can be thinking about something. I can be thinking about, all right, hopefully he gets done on time. I'm meeting someone to watch some football at, uh, at uh, uh, I don't know, BW3. You know, whatever. But I, but I want to stay focused long enough just to remember, hey, I say it again, humble thyself. So grace and pride are internal enemy. Uh, Internal enemies. Pride demands that God bless me in the light of merit, whether real or imagined. I love that he said that. But grace will not deal with me on the basis of anything in me, good or bad, but only on the basis of who God is. So when someone says to you, why your God? Why your God? Why do I have to believe in your God? I believe in such and such. I believe No, because my God, what you believe in, the only way you can. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just love the Lord. The only reason you can disbelieve is because of the belief in my God. 
Is he's not a, he, I mean, really, if you think about this, this is going to sound sarcastic. I really don't mean it to be. He really is a better than God. Because the only reason you're able to believe in Satan or anything else is because my God spoke this world into existence. So without him, you're not believing because you're not breathing. Because he died on a cross for you. Now, do I believe there's a gentler way to say that to someone? Yes. But to you guys today, that's the way I'm going to keep it. And I'm okay with that. Uh, but grace will not deal with you, once again, on the basis of anything you've done. Remember, he gives grace to the humble. It isn't as if our humility earns the grace of God. That's impossible. Humility merely puts us in a position to receive the gift he freely gives. He freely gives this gift. And I'm sorry, I just, I need that. I need that gift. Uh, I, I've said this before, but I love when my, um, I call him my pops. Uh, he was such a, uh, just a father figure to me. Uh, I went and moved in with him at a very uh, young age. I think I was 13, and uh, and I've said this before, but he would he would give me like a a, a a bogus box, like I don't know. I think I said this uh, a clock, and I was like, oh, cool, yeah, that. I mean, I know we don't make a lot of money, but yeah, no, thanks, man. I didn't want to be like that's kind of rude. Like why, why is it, my clock works fine. Like I'm I'm always early, so there's no way he's giving me a a hint. Like, you know, like if you're smelly and someone buys you a thing of deodorant, that's weird. You know, that, that's, a, that's a weird thing. But on the inside of that was like a shiny ring. And I was like, oh, he was like, just open the box. And, and, and isn't that what this, I want that kind of grace. But there's something i got to do. Brother George taught about it today. I have to confess with my lips. But then, as James says earlier, i got to be doers of the word. And then he goes on to say, I, gotta, I could almost do this whole thing today, and I won't. But then he goes on to say, just, just look at the... Oh man, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't care. I'm not sorry. But just look at what James is doing. And, and, and the first chapter he's saying, the testing of your faith produces steadfast endurance. All right, cool. That sounds good. I want some of that endurance. So I'm going to get tested. We're going to get tested. Then you can, just, you can literally just look at the titles. You don't even have to look at the verses yet. Uh, hearing and doers of the word. All right, that means I, I, this is a fact, so then i got to go to this. And then he's talking about the, uh, the sin and partiality of what nothing that I did on my own merit. And then he's talking about taming the tongue, which is a beautiful thing. And then once again, he's going into not being lovers of the world. I just love the book of James. It's beautiful because he just, he doesn't beat around the bush. I mean, look what he says here. He's saying, be humble, that the grace can't come from us. That's impossible. There's no way, but i got to be humble. i got to be humble. Then verse 7, look at it. It says, therefore, and we know why, why it's therefore. Therefore, submit to God. In light of grace offered to the humble, there is only one thing to do. Submit to God. Oh, man. This means to order yourself under God, to surrender to Him as conquering King and start receiving the benefits of His reign. The benefits. How will the benefits look in your life? Are you taking advantage of those benefits? When I, when I think about that, I think about a job and I'm like, oh man, I got some great benefits, but am I, am I using them? We have some great resources at, uh, from First Free Will, but, but am I plugging in? If you're going through depression, uh, call me. Uh, First Free Will has some great things that can help you with that. If you're going through PTSD, man, uh, a brother, Mo uh, Dr. Moody has come up with great things. To, so it's not just about a denomination. These are people that care. These are people that are rooted in the Word. This is not about a religion, and he knows that too. This is about a relationship with a living Savior that on every little thing that you have going on in your life, discouragement, depression, money, it's all in here. Man, it's a package deal if I'm just humble. I just love him. I don't know why preachers can do it inside of an hour. It's just impossible. It's just that blows your head up. It's almost like when I walk out of here, it's like a fresh armor of God. No matter what. I'll never forget when uh, 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 Sister Pat said, hey, you know, uh, I just, because she misses her husband so much that she was like, man, sometimes I, I feel like he's here with me. And I love that. Hey, look, we're all going to go. I hope we all know that. Otherwise, i got to do a new sermon. But we are all going to die. That is a fact. But there's some sadness and some mourning that comes along with that. Man, Amen. I talk about my brother and my mom and things like that. I miss them. But guess what? That's not where it ends. It's not at the graveyard. No. Man, 
What did he say to Lazarus? Rise, Lazarus. He didn't say it. He didn't just say rise. That would have been a whole different ballgame. This is Jesus Christ talking. That he raises the dead, but then when I get in some depression and discouragement or whatever because a church is not building the way I think it is, or, or maybe, uh, let's just get real today, maybe people aren't uh, doing what I think they should. It's not about that. But seek, seek him in your own heart. That's the benefits. Not just for the beneficial fact of, of filling a church, but seeing what he'll do in your relationship. When you, when you say something rude to your wife, you can go back and say, hey, will you forgive me? Forget empty sorries. Will you forgive me? Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I, I, I mean, I just, I, it's, it's not what I meant, baby. It's not what I meant. Please. And I can bring that to the Lord Jesus Christ. And I love this. If you don't do the first part of the verse, then the second part won't be achievable. Let's read. It says, resist the devil. Got to submit to God first. That's the deal. I cannot resist the devil on my own merit. I can't get that grace from my own merit. I have to submit to him. What does the submission look like? It means daily. I promise you it does. It means daily. It means you don't know if someone's going to... I'm sorry. Uh, my wife might get mad at me for this. But, I, but, I, I, but I'm sorry. No, I don't know that brother. I, I'm just going to say it. October 16th, brother Mark's going into a surgery. He may not walk out. Hey, you ought not say that. What do you mean? Why? Maybe that's his time. Maybe this is my time. Maybe I go out there and have a heart attack. Oh, you ought not say that. Stop that. What do you mean you ought not say that? It's facts. But how do I feel about it when I get up there? Hey, Lord, did I do anything? Did I submit to you? Because it felt like the devil was keeping, you know, keep, just kept going on me and on me and on me. And then, and then I don't want him to say, yeah, but remember what the Word said, Scott. You didn't submit. you got to submit to me. Then it says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Will Satan play me like a puppet? Will he use the news media? Will he use, what will he use? Because I see it all the time. Will my disobedience and strongholds make it easy for him? Resist the devil and he will flee from you. To solve the problem of carnality, and I love that word, that carnal thinking, and the strife it causes, we must also resist the devil. This means to stand against the devil's deceptions and his efforts to what? Intimidate me. To intimidate me. Because that's what he wants to do. You're never getting that place. You're never getting that job. Your mom was right. You are a loser. You're never getting this. You're never... No. Not if I've submitted to God. Satan can't use that stuff. Remember what he says. Jesus Christ himself said. He didn't sit there and argue with them back and forth. Well, you're not right. I know you are. But what am I? I know you are. No, he didn't do that. He said, it is written. But hey, remember something. That's a package deal. If I'm submitting to him and he's saying his word is sharper than any two-edged sword, then submitting to him to get that grace and submitting to him for the word... Then there's some. Then what is written? I, I will do a sermon on that one time. What is written? That's why he defeated them. But I can't defeat them if I don't know what is written. So I got to open his word, and I got to understand this. As we resist the devil, we're promised that he will flee from us. James simply challenges individuals, Christians, to deal with Satan as a, oh, I love this as a conquered foe who can and must be personally resisted. Resist comes from the two Greek words stand and against. And, and read Ephesians 6 sometime, and, and like I said earlier, and look at all the stands and, and withstand and things like that. Stand and against. James tells us to stand against the devil. Satan can be set running by the resistance of the lowliest believer who comes in authority as of what Jesus did on the cross. Oh man, I love that. A famous ancient Christian writer uh, named uh, Hermas wrote that I oh, love, man, I just, I'm sorry, I'm going to say I love a million times today. I just love this. The devil can wrestle against the Christian, but he can not pin him down. Someone got to say amen. amen. I got to have it. I got to have it. He cannot pin me down. Why? Because the right hand. Remember what Revelation says and many other verses. Hey, no matter how Satan's coming, he's got the enemy at the footstool. I'm sorry. I just, I almost went, I'm short. 
Uh, so I'd need a, a big chair. But, but I almost want one of them big giant chairs, even like the barbershop ones where they got to pump me up because I'm short. But I just want just that picture of him being like, hold on, Satan, don't mess. I, I chose Gene. You can't do that. He's submitting to me. He's humbled himself. He's doing what the verses say. He's waking up in the morning. Is he perfect? Get that out of your head. None of us are. Get it out of your head. Verse 8 sums it up. It says, after this, man, what a beautiful, man, I just love the way, it's like a beautiful roller coaster if that's such thing. Uh, but draw near. Man, draw near. The grace is poured in. It's offered. He's jealous for me. Uh, I've humbled myself. I've, I've, I've submitted to him. I've resisted the day. Oh, man, this is just, it's beautiful stuff. It's just a beautiful puzzle of what, what James, I believe, is doing here. The devil can wrestle against the Christian, but cannot pin him down. Once again, that's beautiful. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Every circumstance, draw near to him. And people think I'm crazy when I say that. I've said it week after week, a scriptural attitude. What's that going to look like? The call to draw near to God is both an invitation and a promise. It is no good to submit to God's authority and to resist the devil's attack and then fail to draw near to God. It won't happen. Therefore, it's a done deal. The devil's going to bait you until you probably go back to something you didn't want to do. A dear, dear brother of mine is living on the street right now. I've tried to do a wellness track. I've tried to do some other things. For all I know, he's in a ditch somewhere in Richmond, Virginia. Dead. Hey, once again, Pastor, come on, bro. Lift us up. I like you. Hey, hey, Pastor, give me some more of that grace stuff. The grace pouring in and, and God be with. Who can be against? And I'm not mocking scripture. The Lord knows my heart better than that. But this is real. These principalities are real. It's not flesh and blood. It's the distractions of an evil world telling you that that evil world, because this generation, the last generation, two generations before, have conformed to something they want because they feel it. They want me to say that. Hey, look. <laughs> Your son and daughter are welcomed here, but don't ever. And I will meet them where they're at. I will meet them where they're at. But because that's the way a feeling is, and they want me to call them some sort of certain pronoun, ain't going to happen. Because the last I checked, the Lord that I serve, when the baby comes out, he says, it's a boy. Or he says, it's a girl. That's it. That's it. Well, but I thought you said have grace. And no, no, he's going to pour the grace in me. I don't have to be rude about that. Taming the tongue. I don't have to be rude about that. I can, I can be gentle and lowly and understand that, hey, I was hurt and confused one time in my life. So no, I don't have to go give them those solid facts and make it just it. No, shame on us if we're doing that. That is not what I'm saying. But I've drawn near to Him. And if I draw near to Him, He says, the brokenhearted and crushed in spirit, that we heard a great sermon one time, that that's God's favor. So if that person's feeling like that, they need to hear things like that. They need to hear it. I need to hear it. And it was beautiful when I heard it. So resist. It's beautiful. The lowliest believer who comes to the authority of God, and what he, or Jesus, and what he did on the cross, oh, man, it's just beautiful. Can't pin him down. You can't do it. Mm. The call to draw near, I have, I'm going to read it again. I have to just remember this. The invitation at the end of every sermon is simple. But don't be afraid to come to the altar. I know what it looks like, but it is, it's cleansing. The Lord, the Lord wants you up here. I'm not, hey look, I'm not getting any extra in my bank account or anything like that when you come to the altar. It's not about that. For all I care, I mean the camera's off, it's not, they're not even going to see you. For all I care, that's, that's between you and God and what's going on. And not that I promise you, the one that's sitting there thinking, I wonder what he's going through, shame on them because they'll be going through it soon. But just continue to pray and be obedient and understand this invitation and the promise. It is no good to submit to God's authority and to resist the devil's attack, then fail to draw to him. We have it as a promise. God will draw near as we draw near to him. What does it mean to draw near? Once again, Spurgeon, uh, in a few ways, and I love this, it says, to draw near in worship, praise, and in prayer. It means to draw near and asking counsel of God. It means to draw near is to, to enjoy in, uh, uh, the communion with God. It means to draw near in general course of uh, tenor of your life. And, and what does that mean when we do the Lord's Prayer? Am I drawing near? Tomorrow morning when you wake up, just seriously, calm down. And I'm a hyper guy, so it's hard for me to say that. But seriously, just give it a second. 
if you don't have a candle, light a candle and just say, hey, Lord, the busiest, this busy life won't slow down, Lord. May I draw near to you this morning? In this moment, Lord, can we just draw near to you? Can we draw near to you? The way, Lord, the way that I miss a loved one, or, or I don't know if you guys ever, when, when, when my mom passed away, I remember going to her house and, and she had this cover and, and, and uh, there was some boxes and I think it was like a year later I opened this box and, and it was like this, um, just a little blanket she kept on the couch and, and, and I smelled it and I was like, oh man, oh man. That's what Jesus wants us to do, to draw near to him. Is she more important than the... No. My mom couldn't go prepare the place. She couldn't die on a cross. Was in... There was nothing on her own merit. She couldn't show me any of that love without God's love. Then it says... <laughs> there it is in my notes again. I love this. I'm just gonna... That's going to be our... Maybe that's... I'm just going to get a banner that says I love this. Uh, it's like James is fed up. He says, cleanse your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts. Man, you double-minded. So what he's saying is, uh, man, the inner thoughts and motives and desires. Cleanse your hands. I won't get into it for sake of time, but uh, look at some of the Old Testament priests that went to God. They would cleanse themselves because it's a holy God. I remember what he tells uh, Joseph and many others. Hey, and this is my God. Sorry, because he's kind of sarcastic too. But hey, Scott, no offense. Take those sandals off, bro. You're on holy ground. But when will we take it that serious? When will we take it? I don't need you to tell me about anything. I've got the Bible. And that's not because I'm not teachable. Well, you should care about this. And you know I care about what God says for me to care about. How do you treat your wife? Let's take it to God. How do you cleanse your hands, you sinners? How do I do that? When we draw near with a Christ-centered heart, we will be convicted of our sin. We won't and can't take advantage of Jesus Christ for His forgiveness. Verse 9 goes on to say, and I love this. Be wretched. Be wretched. Miserable, that means. Because when I first saw this, I was like, wait, mourn and weep? That's rude. I don't want to mourn and weep. No. Mourn and weep because of your carnality thinking. Mourn and weep of, the, of being miserable. Mourn and weep. The, the foolish, when he goes on to say, check this out. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Gloom. Foolishly indulging in worldly pleasures. That's why he's saying it. Because that's what people are doing. They're laughing at Christians. <laughs> Y'all think you got to say, hey, yeah, whatever. This person's going to get in office. This person. Hey, guess who's in control? The Lord Jesus Christ. He's not falling asleep, guys. He didn't fall asleep. And maybe, just maybe, the soldiers he picked for his kingdom are sitting in this church. And you can't even say maybe because it says it. It's been preordained. It's predestined. I'm sorry. That makes me want to get pretty hyper. I'm a soldier in this kingdom? Think about it. I picture Isaiah once again. Isaiah and this... Like, like, like say, say Mark and I went there and we were like... Uh, and you know my little CV thing. I'm dying to get one. And, uh, hey, Lord. Lord, you there? Uh, you might have made a mistake. Where are you at? Um, and you know where I'm at. Why are you asking that question? But uh, it's a bunch of dry bones here, Lord. It's just, it's just a bunch of dry We're in a valley of dry bones. Like, I think you, you, you either lost the coordinates. Maybe I was talking to Mark, talking about some worldly things. What's going on? Oh, no, no, no. no. They're dry. You see dry bones. He sees soldiers that he lifted up. Not just regular people to go back to their village and help. Soldiers came out of dry bones. Oh, man. What a beautiful thing. Man, it's amazing. I, I never thought my life scripture could get you fired up. Man, we should be marching out of here. I want to get some shields and some swords, and I'm afraid of that. We'd hurt each other getting out of here, but man, that's the way I want to, that's the way I want to see it. So to mourn and weep as appropriate under the conviction of sin, and we're compelled to find cleansing at the cross, so we take joy in the clinging to the cross. God will not turn away a broken heart and contrite over our sin. Contrite means a penitent, which is showing sorrow, humble, once again, humble, that word contrite, uh, by our sins and failures, seeking after God, being regret, regretful or remorseful. Isn't that, that's how you should be feeling. And if you do something wrong and you're thinking to yourself, hey, no big deal, we have a God that forgives. 
uh, tonight I'll cheat on Jamie. Let's get real. And tomorrow, guess what? You said white as snow. You said he... No, 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 no. Contract. That means that has to bother me. And I don't care what time it is. If you got to go, go. I'm just, i got to read this. It's too good. I'm sorry if that sounded rude. Uh, 5117 of, um, of uh, Psalm. Psalms, yeah, Psalm uh, 51, 17, it says, and, and remember, this is when David, uh, when Nathaniel the prophet went to him after uh, he had gone to Bathsheba. Uh, so think about that. Uh, he had walked out on everything. He had, he had uh, oh gosh, I mean, almost in the line of uh, Stephen Lawson. But look what he tells him. After he says, have mercy on me, my steadfast love, uh, according to the abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions, wash me thoroughly from my iniquities and cleanse me from my sin, Lord. Cleanse me. And then it says, create in me, Lord, because he feels bad about this, that contrite spirit. He feels bad. He feels remorseful for what he's done, but he knows who he serves. So he knows he's not going to do this just to get a leg up and keep doing it. No, that's not the way the Christian walk should work. And it says, create in me a, heart, a clean heart, O God, and renew me a right spirit, a spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, please, Lord, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. And then look at 17. It says the sacrifice of God, the sacrifices of God are broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O oh God, you will not desire. Oh, man. Ah, oh, it's just beautiful. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. And I promise I'm wrapping it up. Humble is to make oneself low. I've got to humble myself, the lowliness. Verse 10, and I promise we're done. Comes back to being humble. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and He will lift you up. As we come as sinners before the Holy God, not as self-righteous religionists. I love that this, uh, the one commentator says religion, religionist. It's so beautiful. As Jesus explained in Luke 18, 10 through 14, read it later. I'm not going to get into it, but it's great stuff. Uh, we appropriately humble ourselves before Him. Remember, that's the, uh, the, the tax collector, and, and I'm not going to get into it because I'll start preaching on it. Because it's exciting. Uh, then He will lift us up. Because God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. And grace, the unmerited favor of God, always lifts us up. In this passage, James has powerfully described both the duty and the blessings of repentance. The duty and blessings of repentance. So there are blessings in repentance. Why? Because he said, draw near. Why? Because he said, once you do that, you can submit to me. Why? Because when you submit to me, all the things that are bothering you and bogged down and got you heavy and it just feels like the world is on you, then it says the devil will flee from you. Man, that's beautiful. I'm going to ask Diane to play the music. That's so beautiful. Love God's word. What did it look like? A valley. They're just bones. I don't know if this will make people mad. Uh, the Holy Spirit, I feel, is just... There's a scene in The Chosen. Uh, and I've had people fight about. <laughs> it's funny. I've had people uh, uh, question me on the, on the show The Chosen on how it's not biblically accurate, but then they'll also tell me about uh, a movie that they watched, and I know for a fact it's got uh, sexual scenes in it. So I'm like, okay, buddy. Yeah, you just, you keep on coming back, man. I mean, that's, that's all I can say. But, but there's, a, uh, there's a scene in there that I believe Dallas Jenkins captured great, and it's when uh, uh, Peter, right after he falls, when, when Jesus is walking on water, and when he gets in the boat, and I think I've said this many times before, but man, I needed this this past week, and I need to draw near to him, and I still need this. But he's clinging on to him, and it's such a. If you if you get a chance, just put a uh, chosen uh, a YouTube video, the clip of uh, Peter and the but Peter and Jesus in the boat. But he's clinging to him, and he says, "Lord, he's crying because if you've watched the show and you forget the show because it is biblical, and I'll say it to anybody, and and you know this, then you know everything he's been through." And, and you know that whether it be Jessica or my wife or whoever or Mark in the hospital that you know you're just and he's just saying he knows everything he's been through all the pain everything and so does Jesus but all he wants them to do is what we should be doing and he's clinging on to him and it's such a beautiful scene and he's saying Lord please he's crying he's saying Lord please don't let go of me Lord don't let go of me 
That's how close I want to feel. And unfortunately, and I take that back. <sighs> Not unfortunately. It's very fortunate. You got to go through some pain. You got to go through some pain. I can't be, I'm not exempt. I got to go through some pain. So I want to just latch on to him. So as I pray today, I need the altar so I will be there myself. Uh, you join if you want. That is your walk with Christ. You can do it from your seat. No one's judging you. I don't do anything. I will never ever, let me, let me say this. I can't. I'm never ever going to act a certain way or say something that's out of the will of God or out of His provisions and promises to fill a church. Nice guy, wrong tribe. Or nice tribe, wrong guy. I can't do it. I cannot do that. I will never do that. I've seen it too much. What makes these pastors walk out on their marriage? What makes these pastors? Because they got to cling on. And I'm not judging them. I'm telling you, it happens so fast, man. Sin will take you where you never imagined you would be. My buddy was doing great. He was asking me about scriptures. But it's got to be more than that. you got to draw to him. You've got to crawl to him in your pain. you got to come to him and say, Hey, Lord, look, I need you. I'm not letting go. You're going to have to walk with all. I won't even get into my way, but it's pretty heavy. Uh, but you got to walk with all of that. And he can take it. If he took it on the cross, he can take it. He can take it. He can take all your body weight, all your pain weight, all that emotional weight, all that depression. Uh, I think I can't do this. This is going to make me happy. This is on. Uh, reel it all in. And that's just, that's his arms just wrapping around you. Reel it all in. You don't know what I'm doing now, but soon you will. I love that scripture. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you. Lord, thank you for a real church. Thank you for real people with real pain and real problems. Lord, may we never project that we're not going to have problems. Lord, may I never get up here and preach that uh, because I've been in my Bible or because I read the Bible that I'm, that, I'm, <laughs> that I'm better than. Lord, the only thing I want to be better than is better than yesterday to serve you. Lord, I do pray for, for Israel. Lord, I know what that looks like in the Bible. Lord, may we read these scriptures and ask you, Lord, I do pray for a strength in marriage. Lord, I stop praying for numbers in a church and I pray for souls now that we may gather around with one another and be soldiers. Lord, if you can do it with dry bones, I know what you can do with us, no matter, Lord, our age. I know our bones get frail and we get weary, Lord, but I know what you can do. 4.13 says it, Lord, of Philippians. All things through you. That's how personal this is. Through Christ, you, Lord, that strengthen me. And if I have that, Lord, I can conquer. And Lord, Romans 8 says that, that we're more than conquerors, Lord. Lord, thank you, Lord. When will I take this walk serious? Lord, get the dust off my Bible. I need you, Lord, more than yesterday, Lord. Oh, Lord, give me that fresh anointing today. Take the worry and the anxieties of today. And, and they're sufficient for today, Lord. Yesterday's gone. Tomorrow's not promised. Lord, thank you. Thank you for eternity. Thank you that it had nothing to do with the merit of Scott Watts. Only, the, only what happened on the cross, Lord. Without that blood sacrifice, Lord, we're not even here today. Lord, thank you. Thank you for preparing our place. Thank you for the beautiful Holy Trinity, Lord. Cleanse us, Lord. If we were double-minded, cleanse us. If I was frightened and, and in return my wife got frightened because of uh, feelings and because she loves me, Lord, shame on me. May we both bond together as she sends me scriptures this morning, Lord. I thank, oh, Lord, thank you. Thank you for this. That we may strengthen one another through your word, Lord. That Satan cannot win because we resisted. We came to you, Lord. And that's what we're doing now, Lord. Lord, I want to thank you for this small church at 8985 Hungry Road. Have your way, Lord, not our way. Not for pride, neither. Lord, no, I do not have a welcome tent. Lord, I don't have a bunch of activities, but I can tell you one thing. There's many people in this church that I can call, and they'll be there for me. They'll come over. 
I believe they wash my feet and I will turn around and wash theirs. Lord, thank you for this. Lord, may you give us this armor of God today that we might be more than conquerors and understand what that really means. More than conquerors over depression. More than conquerors over someone else angering me. And it's you teaching me a lesson to tame the tongue that you got something down the road because of that obedience that that's when I'm going to conquer. That it's not a if, it's a when. But we've got to trust you and that's why we walk by this kind of faith, not just by naked sight. Lord, thank you for this leader. You are the, oh, Lord, thank you. Lord, be with us, strengthen us. In your beautiful, beautiful name, amen.